right, guys. Welcome back to another edition of Native MMA Radio. I am back, Randall, folks, here with my main man, Walid Kandusi. Wally Wall, welcome back, brother. We're here to recap one of your favorite guys, man, Colby Covington. He looked pretty good this weekend, had some crazy things to talk about afterwards. We'll get into that later. But, man, did he look good against Tyrone Woodley. Well, I wasn't surprised at all by the by the fight. I knew that how it was going to go. We talked about Woodley needed to bring his best version so he can beat Colby Covington, and that's not what happened. Yeah, unfortunately, we've seen the same same version of Tyron that we've seen for the past two and a half fights now, three fights. Yeah. I mean, it, it's been. It's been a very, very long 15 rounds with Tyrone Woodley, let me tell you what. Yeah, yeah. Uh, like I told you during the fight, and I will, like, no filter, I tell you, I told you that this version of Woodley make me want to throw up. Yeah, it, it, it's getting kind of uh, yeah. ridiculous. But there was uh, some great fights. I mean, a draw between Nico Price and Cowboy, that was an awesome fight back and forth. I mean, if it wasn't for the groin shot, I feel like Nico Price wins the fight. Mm-hmm. Uh, Mackenzie Dern looks amazing with a huge submission. Johnny Walker gets back in the win column. Very good card. I, I what was it like? Fourteen fights, I believe. Uh, something like that. But yeah, very very solid card. Yeah, solid card. I, I I definitely enjoyed myself on this one. First fight of the night: Tyson Nam versus Jerome Rivera. Uh, round one: Nam was able to find his right hand multiple times. Rivera mixing up his combos well really working on that lower leg kick. In round two, Nam just comes out and fucking lands a huge right hand about 20 seconds in, jumps all over him. The ref steps in. Tyson Nam wins the fight by TKO 34 seconds into the second round. How impressed were you with Tyson Nam? And that's the second knockout in a row, and he's looked very, very good doing so. Well, to get finishes in uh, in a division like that, you know, you need – real power and this yes. dude have power he really really does and uh, i feel like it was the best way to start this card with the uh, fast finish second round first seconds of the second round perfect yeah you always talk about the heavyweight starting the fights this time it's the yeah. little guys starting it and they definitely started it with the bang still yeah yes they did yes they did he's got that big right hand man i feel like if he lands that right hand on most of these guys he's gonna knock them out Definitely, he has the power, and he's he's proving it that he can knock out pe- people in this division. Very next fight, Andre Ewell, our good friend, takes on Irvin Rivera. Round one, Andre looked good, kept a good pace. He used his reach really well, uh, even had very dominant positions in the grappling stages. Andre Ewell wins the round, in my opinion, 10-9. So we go to round two. Ewell still dictating the round, using his reach, mixing it up very well to the body and to the head. At the end, it looked like he hurt Rivera badly to the body. Rivera kept the fight, though, very interesting. You know, in my opinion, though, UL won that round. So it's 20 to 18. Round three, UL usually gasses at this point, but looked good. He stuffed a lot of takedowns. Yeah. It was one thing that we've seen a lot from him in the past. So he was able to be taken down, especially in those later rounds. And it really, you know, nullified the reach that he had on the guy. He's really worked on his takedown defense, and he's improved that a whole hell of a lot. Uh, I enjoyed watching Irvin Rivera. The dude's a, a very, very good stylistic matchup for a lot of people, especially in that division. And he's never out of a fight, unfortunately. He lost this round and this fight, Andre Ewell, 30-27. Uh, the actual official decision, though, was a split decision for Andre Ewell. I thought it was a very good fight for both guys. I, I enjoy watching Irvin Rivera. He, I, I believe, unfortunately, 0-3 in the UFC so far. But the dude has looked phenomenal in every single one of his fights. That was a surprising decision. When the, like for me, it was a unanimous decision win for uh, for Andre, yeah. so it was yeah, a bit well. surprised. But uh, at, at least he didn't get robbed. So you know, no. you know. So at least he didn't get robbed. So anyhow, it's a it's a win for him, and uh, just let's move on. But yeah, that was a weird judging in this card. Yeah, yeah but fight. like I said, uh, you know, Rivera kept it interesting, and I, I think that's probably obviously what that one judge saw. You know, maybe favored him a little more, but it was just an interesting situation, especially because, like I said, I had it all three rounds for Andre Ewell, so went in with a split decision. One judge giving the fight to yeah. Rivera. You know, I'm glad that Ewell was able to get out of that, and he definitely well deserved victory. Yeah, well, that was very weird. Like, how can you give this fight for Rivera? Even though Rivera like fought his ass off, but yeah, he, he stayed in it, but yeah. he did not do enough to even yeah. win one round, in my opinion. 
Oh yeah, give him one round. That's debatable, but giving him the fight. The fight. Yeah, no. crazy. <laughs> crazy talk. Yeah. Journey Newsome versus Randy Costa in the very next fight. Round you round one. Randy Costa lands a huge highlight reel. Left high kick knocks out Journey Newsome. Randy Costa wins by knockout 41 seconds into the first round. Hello, Randy Costa. Dude was an underdog going into this fight. Comes in and has a like I said, a huge highlight reel fucking finish. What is next for this young man? Oh, I don't know what's next for him, but dude, like this finish was amazing, and uh, I like it when they go fast, you know, in these uh, prelims because I I, I want to, like the both fighters to really bring it on and you know try to kill each other if I yes. can say that, you know, because it, they they really need to go for the kill, and that's what he did, you know, that that was beautiful, I kid. Yeah, a huge performance on the prelims could yeah. really elevate you and boost you into that main card spot. So, you know, depending on what you do, you've got to make sure it's spectacular no matter how you do it. Exactly, exactly. That because That's how you make a name for yourself. That 100%. Derek Minner made a name for himself against TJ Laramie. TJ was making his UFC debut. He was the favorite in this fight. Round one, Derek pushed the pace early. Minor gets him up against the face. Up against the fence, going for a takedown. He kept his head to the outside, which is a very big mistake against somebody like Derek Minner because he is a master at the guillotine. He slaps in a deep, deep guillotine and finishes the fight. Derek Minner submits TJ Laramie with a very beautiful guillotine choke. 52 seconds into the first round. Another quick finish, Wally Wall. Man, uh, very impressive performance by Miner. I can't believe that Laramie kept his head in that position. I know he was going for the double leg, but uh, it's a situation where you kind of want to put your ear on their, you know, in their on their belly. You definitely yeah. don't want to put your head to the outside, especially with somebody with such great guillotines yeah. like Derek Minner. He, he snatched that neck up and walked home with two checks. I, I don't know if it was like uh, the excitement or that's why maybe he he botched that takedown, but. but yeah, you don't put your head there, especially against someone who, you know, who can uh, re- legi- legitimately, specialty. yeah, he can he can kill you with a guilty. And so, yeah, uh, kudos to to Derek because that was a smooth guilty. And so, yeah, yes. uh, but uh, yeah, I don't know. Maybe it was uh, because it was his first fight in the UFC. A little bit of jitters. TJ. Maybe that's what I think. Yeah, very possible, very possible. One young lady who did not have any jitters, Jessica Rose Clark, looked very well against Sarah Alper. Round one, Jessica looked very good. She pretty much dominated the first round with clinching. She had a very good takedown defense, which I thought was very important. Clark wins the fight, ten or wins the round, 10-9. A round two, Jessica Rose looked very good again in this fight, dictating the striking exchanges, using her strikes after she stopped the takedown, which was very important. She was able to, you know, sprawl, get in big elbows you know in the same transition it was very very good that she was able to do that it really kept alpar from getting off any offense and it really tired her out quickly round three jessica rose clock dominating this fight chris tyone messes up yet another finish he did the same thing last week guys jessica clark clark lands a huge knee while alpar is falling down uh, when they redid the replay, it was like a good inch that her butt didn't touch the ground yet. So obviously it was a completely legal blow. So in that situation, the referee should have called the fight and it should have been a TKO victory for Jessica Rose Clark. Yeah. Now, that's not what happened. He paused the fight and then restarts the fight in one of the most ridiculous situations I've ever seen. I don't even think you're supposed to do that. I don't think you're allowed to do that. Um in any every situation I've ever heard of, if you institute the replay, if you stop it like that, it's usually a situation where the fight's over. Yeah. So I agree whatever. With you. I agree with Went you. Back. Uh, Go ahead. There's like for me, if a referee make these mistakes with with the crowd all booing or something like that, I can I can understand kind of the pressure. Yeah. There's no crowd. You're just between you and your head. The silence. You don't do that. You don't do this kind of mistake because uh, when you when you when you stop when you make a stoppage and then you need to check if there's uh, w- there was some illegal knee or whatever. It's either a finish 
you give it either to to the to the one who actually knocked the other guy or the other girl out or the other hand because it's the qualif- disqualification or you call it a no contest you don't yeah. stop and then bring back the fight that doesn't make and any sense and this is two weeks in a row with the same ref Chris Tyone yeah there's there's uh, there's some issues there so Tyone restarts the fight two more minutes of Jessica Rose just beating Alpard down she gets the finish anyways Jessica Rose Clark wins the fight by TKO four minutes and 21 seconds into the third round it was about two minutes too long in my opinion Jessica Rose Clark yeah. should have had the victory a little sooner and I don't think Alpar should have taken the unnecessary damage Listen, I tell you something else. If I was uh, on uh, Sarah's uh, corner, I would throw the towel there, oh. the, at that moment. Well, not if only I see, is so, that too, it, it, I have to agree with you, and I'm glad you see, brought that if, up. If I see that the referee is not protecting my fighter, I would protect it myself. Yes. You know, this is what I. For me, it was crazy. Like there was so many what the what the hell moments in this fight. Like. It was a one-sided win for Jessica. That was a great bef- performance by her. But the, the 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 referee, Sarah's corner, they could have done way better than this. Yeah, I mean, when you seen that she was, you know, really out of it, and it seemed like she didn't want to be there anymore. Why not throw in the towel? Save your fighter for another day and uh, show her that you really have her back. Yeah, she was. She was. She was really out. Like you said. Uh, very powerful performance by Jessica. For me, if it went to decision, it would it would be the kind of decision that end like a, in a 30-26 or 30-25. Oh, for so sure, 30-26 easily. Yeah, so just 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 throw the towel. Out. Outside of attempting takedowns, I didn't see really much offense out nothing. of Sarah. Nothing. There was nothing. There, she she did. It wasn't. And she, it wasn't her night. She, no, she didn't propose anything. It wasn't her night. Now, one lady who definitely was her night, Myra Bueno Silva, took out Myra Bueno Bermela. Try to say both these names ten times fast. Yeah. Goodness gracious. Why did they put these two women together? It's like the battle of the names. Holy shit. Round one, Romero Barrella takes down Bueno Silva and lands some hammer fists. But the whole time, Bueno Silva is working on a triangle. She ends up switching from that triangle to an arm bar, submitting Marrera Barrella. Myra Bueno Silva submits Mara Moreno Barrella. Two <laughs> minutes, 29 seconds into the first round. God damn, that's a lot of names, but let me tell you what, this young lady had a beautiful performance in Valentina Shevchenko's division. Could this possibly, one day down the road, be a contender for that 125-pound title? Well, listen, in this division, there's the huge gap between the champion and the contenders, but the contenders are so not far from each other, then, uh, then I agree with you, yes. One or two big wins, and you're definitely in the talk for a fight against the champion. So, yeah, and a strong performance like that from Bueno Silva really makes her a legitimate, uh, legit, legit, how do you say that? Le- legit, yeah, or just a legit uh, contender in this division. 100% I agree with you, my brother. I feel like she could one day challenge Valentina Shevchenko. I don't know if she's going to successfully challenge her. But I think yeah. one day you could see her at the top of the 125-pound contenders list. Listen, just fighting for the belt, it's actually a huge honor. And it's it's a win. It's something that you will carry. Like, it, it will be something that you accomplish in your career. So this is like... It's not nothing to fight for the belt, even though you lose or whatever, but it's something huge to fight for a belt, especially in the UFC. 100%, especially in, yeah, like you said, especially in the UFC. So next fight, we have Mershad Bektik taking on the newcomer Damon Jackson. Uh, Super excited. Jackson really has been around the whole MMA scene for a long time, getting a, a crack back at the UFC. Round one, Bechtick comes out just going to work, landing takedowns after takedown, doing damage while well, he's got Jackson down. Jackson was able to fight off his back really well, able to secure multiple submissions. Obviously, none of them stuck. Bechtick won that round 10-9. Very beautiful wrestling by him. Round two, Bechtick again uses his wrestling to dominate the round, working good ground and pound and making Jackson carry him for most of the round. Bechtick 
20 to 18. That round could have been a 10 8, just depending on which judge and how they were scoring it. Round yeah. three, Brecht goes for an early takedown. Uh, in the round again this time, Damon Jackson slaps on a guillotine choke and gets the comeback finish over Mershad Bechtick. Damon Jackson submits Mershad Bechtick one minute and 30, 21 seconds into the third round. Why is it that Mershad Bechtick, he's like the Atlanta Falcons of the yeah. MMA world. He could get a huge lead on you, but he's going to blow it at the end of the day. Why has this always happened to him? Damon Jackson, off of like a couple days notice, the biggest underdog on the card, completely comes back on him. The same thing happened, you know, with uh, Darren Elkins at UFC 209. It was crazy. Elkins was losing the whole fight yeah. and then just went on damage mode and took out Bechtick. Here it goes, happens again. Bechtick obviously got super tired. Damon Jackson snaps on the guillotine, gets the submission. What an impressive performance by the newcomer. Uh, another disappointment by Mirsad because it was a yes. fight that he he had actually to win. If you ask me about before the Elkins fight about Bektic in 2020, where would he be in this division? I would tell you he will be on the title picture because that's how great he, he, the potential is. That's why we thought that he will do. Um, the guy can strike. His grappling is is amazing. But ever since that that fight against Ilkins, I feel like something is off. Yeah, one hundred percent. It seems like he's a he's like I said, just can't close it out. <laughs> it's unfortunate. Yeah. He's like he's one of the greatest wrestlers in the MMA game right now. Just can't seem to get the big one. And there's definitely room for him in this division. You know that he can make an impact. You know that he can win against. Against top contenders, he had that yeah. potential to beat them. He, he's he, oh, he's he was not running an, through people up until he ran into yeah. Emmett. And he's not and an Josh easy matchup. Clock. He's not an easy matchup for for a no. lot of fighters because he's a short grappler, which is you know very difficult to handle. And uh, yeah, but I don't know. There's something that I I don't see what's the problem. I don't. It's a lack of concentration or whatever because I don't understand he's how you can. He's with the great cramp now. He's with the yeah. great camp. He's with Faraz Harabi at TriStar up in Canada. I mean, you got a beautiful mind behind you. I just don't understand why it's not clicking. How can you? Where's the killer the instinct? You you beating the guy for two rounds. Why? Well, in that's the what I'm saying. Round? Where's the killer instinct? Why not go in there and just smash him? Yeah, that's why that you need to approach that third round like you did for those two first rounds. I don't know something it is something is in his head. You can tell he was tired for sure though. So maybe there's, the casting's a little bit of a problem. But I maybe there's underlying an injury we just don't know about. Maybe, but that Elkins fight is still in his head. I can yeah. guarantee you that it's still in his head. Well, up next, the featured prelim of the night: Jordan Espinoza takes on David Devarak. Let me tell you what, very interesting fight between these two went back and forth. Both guys looked good in round one. Espinoza was leading the exchanges and dictating the pace. Very close round. I slightly gave the edge to Jordan. Espinoza up 10-9. Round two, Davarak really stepped it up in this round and taking and started taking the fight to Espinoza, landing clean on all three levels. Espinoza, most notably, he was eating up leg kicks. I mean, some of the most nastiest leg kicks we've seen of the night. 1919 Davarak comes back and ties it up. Round three, obviously going in there even. Davarak really used his counter punching and lower leg kicks well in this round. I believe that gave him the edge. Davarak 29 28. The decision. Davarak wins by unanimous decision. Now, if anyone was going to get the split decision, I thought this was a split decision way yeah. more than the UL fight. Uh, a very good fight. Regardless, Davarak really impressed me, especially Jordan Espinosa. His wrestling is uh, top notch. You know that he obviously had a huge advantage there. And Davarak was able to, you know, keep him away from being able to use that. Yeah, it was a close fight, but uh, Jordan definitely definitely lost the the three the three rounds. Uh, like it was in each round, he wasn't that far from winning it, but he he lost it. Yeah. And uh, they that that's that tell you how great the, of the leg performance kicks, by David like was. The yeah. lead leg kicks that was starting in the second round really made the difference of the fight. And we see, we are seeing that like a more often in in those more actually last yeah more and more. 
it gives you it really gives you that those points that can actually give you that win for that round and it make the other fighter really slow down and make you yes. make it easier for you in the last in the last round so yeah leg kicks definitely is a game changer the main card starts kevin holland versus darren stewart these two both coming out swinging like crazy both guys landing big punches kevin holland seemed to get the better of the exchanges holland wins round one ten nine round two was pretty even both guys landing effective combos Holland started to use his distance very well in that round. Holland 20 to 18 round three. This is Stewart really finally able to get the takedown. He's able to work well off the top landing clean ground and pound on Holland who started to obviously clearly gas Stewart wins the round, but obviously Holland wins the decision. Kevin Holland beats Darren Stewart by split decision victory. Uh, you know, loud mouth, big mouth, however you want to call yeah. him. Kevin Holland is a phenomenal fighter. I don't care what you guys think about him personally. I love watching the guy. I love watching him in the cage. I think he's super exciting fighting. I think he's super exciting talking. I think he is a perfect package of a guy that you're trying to push. Holland is the type of fighter that a, a, Dana, a Dana White would dream about because you yes. bring him, you make him in the in the in your if you have a card. You, you put Kevin Holland in that card and you know that it will hype up a little bit more the card. So this is how good Kevin Holland is. And uh, yeah, there's no bad performances by Kevin Holland. There's no boring fight of Bro, Kevin Holland. UFC debut against Thiago Santos. Okay, that's all I got to yeah. say. Who else has that type of resume? Who who had the, the, the size of balls that he has? I don't think there's <laughs> nobody has the, the size of balls that he has. So Kevin Holland, uh, another great performance. I, I really enjoy seeing him winning because I feel like he deserves some wins because he deserves to fight against bigger names. Yes. Uh, even, even though I feel like even if he's not right now fighting big names, but he's fighting those the type of fighters that can actually become contenders. Yeah. yeah, they are very... He's not fighting. But Darren no Stewart just had matchup. a big knockout a couple weeks ago. Yeah, there's no easy matchup for Kevin Holland. He's fighting against very dangerous fighters, one against yes. one after the other. So. And I want this... to point out Darren Stewart from London, England. Okay, Leon Rocky Edwards is from the same exact area. Tell me how we've seen Darren Stewart like three times. We haven't seen Leon Rocky Edwards once in the past like nine years. It seems like. Uh, about that, uh, Wonder Boy, who never called out any person in the history in his in his life, he said that's is he's the only one he's the only fighter that he called out on Twitter, and he <laughs> retweeted it again. He told he told him how can you not have a fight and I'm calling you out and you're not doing anything. Right. There's definitely a fight uh, for uh, Leon Edwards. There's another guy that I actually wants to see him fight against Leon Edwards, and his uh, his next in this card. You. It- it's glad that we'll, we'll get about get to that in a second because yeah. I have that same idea. Mackenzie Dern versus Randa Marcos, a great fight between these two young ladies. Round one, both girls come out swinging. Dern slips. Marcos jumps right into her guard. Yeah. Uh, Dern, I mean, why would you do that? It's it, obviously, Mackenzie Dern slips. I, I wasn't. It was a, an accidental slip. But why, being Ronda Marcus, would you jump in her, her guard? Let her, let her in the like, ground. Why? Yeah, Get come on. up! You're going to box me. Anyways, Mackenzie goes down, works looking for a triangle, switches from the triangle to Oma Plata, settles for ground and pound, and slaps on an armbar. Very beautiful transitioning through the entire exchange. Man, Mackenzie Dern submits Marcos by a beautiful armbar. She wins the fight three minutes and 44 seconds into the first round. Very impressive by Mackenzie. I can't wait to continue to see how she grows. Obviously, we've seen her when she was very young in her career. Now she's just continued to ascend. Uh, Mom Mackenzie has been on a tear beautiful dance after winning the fight. And listen, in this fight game. In the MMA, there's black belts and there's black belts. Like there's some yes. guys that have black belts who can actually just they have some good ground games. But there's the the Damian Maya, the the Mackenzie Dern type of black belts. And why the hell would you go to the ground against a against a fighter like Mackenzie Dern? She is lethal. Like she she can she will murder you. Don't go to the ground. Yes. Just strike <laughs> with her. That was a. Weird decision by Renda Marcos to go to the ground, but it was uh, yeah, elementary almost. 
Like, how do you still make that mistake being a veteran in the UFC, knowing that this young lady, her biggest chance of victory is a submission. Her number one go-to fucking thing is her grappling. Yeah. Why jump in her guard? If it's the last 10 seconds and you, you just want to score some points with some ground and pound, yeah, I can't agree. I see yeah. it. But, but not you in start the... the and you're, yeah. you're, you're not even wet yet. You yeah, haven't nah. started sweating. You're not slippery. You're dry as can be. She's able to do whatever she wants to you. Being, obviously, like we talked about, there's levels to this shit. And she's on a completely different level than anybody in the women's MMA right now. That's like going to the clinch with, against uh, Ronda Rousey. That doesn't yes. make any sense. You know that's uh, maybe her She's only just weapon. She's going to judo fucking flip yeah. you. Take and that then, arm and snatch uh, ask, it. Ask at Zingano how, the, how did it felt, you know, going, exactly. uh, running to that to that clinch. So, yeah. Uh, great performance by Mikazi Doe. Another great performance. Johnny Walker versus Ryan Spann. Round one, both guys come out swinging. Span. Yeah. Tries to grapple as much as possible. Obviously, I wouldn't want to stand with Mr. Johnny Walker. Span drops Walker twice, though. Looking for a takedown after the second knockdown. Walker throws huge elbows in hammer fists to knock out Denard Span. Johnny Walker beats Ryan Span. I said Denard. Beats Ryan Span by KO. Two minutes and 43 seconds into the first round. Johnny Walker is back with a huge knockout victory. Back at it again, and uh, Brian Spann really, I felt like he could have had that win uh, because it was going twice. wild. Twice, twice yeah. he hurt him, and I was like, I, I get wanting to go for the grappling exchanges, especially with somebody as dangerous as yeah. Johnny Walker and explosive, and all you know, he, you've seen what he's able to do and what he's capable of. I get wanting to go to the ground; it takes a lot of that explosiveness away, and you kind of get to see what his ground game is about. But when you have him hurt like that, why not just try to fucking keep it standing and see what he can do? They both kind of clipped each other on that second one, but obviously Span got the best of it. Going for that takedown, though, Walker just made him pay for that dearly. I feel like Johnny Walker wasn't out of it either in, in either knockdown that happened. I feel like it was more a of a surprising punch than an actually punch that really hurt him. That's what I feel yeah. like. I give you that. Now, his first fight over there with SBG Ireland, he says he hasn't made Conor McGregor yet, but he spent a lot of time with John Cavanaugh. Looked like he has, and it's paid off. He was very, very, very patient yeah. after his victory. We usually see him go crazy. This time he kind of got in his little zen mode. He And that's what he needs. I feel like a, guy, a coach like uh, Kavanaugh can actually bring him that – uh coolness that he actually need that because maybe at some point a johnny walker in a fight like that in his career he could have maybe think about defending the takedown and or yes. you know how how to handle the situation because he was wild and that's what he needs he needs some control he needs some self-control and coach kavana in sbg maybe can bring that up for him 100 percent Kazmash Shemaev, the man of the month, the months, the hours, the pandemic, however the year. you want to look at it, Final takes year. on Gerald Mershart round one. Kazmat throws one body kick, then walks Mershart down, lands a straight right hand, and knocks him out cold. Kazmat Shemaev knocks out Gerald Mershart the third, 17 seconds into the first round. Is this guy just fucking amazing or what? Well... Uh, I don't agree with you when you say that he's the fighter of the month. He's the fighter of the year, no doubt about it. When you see the level, the the number of fights he he already have in 2020, quickest and most effective turnaround in modern MMA UFC history. He's a Three killer. fights. What was it like? 66 days. He yeah. his opponents hit him twice, and he hit his opponents like 260 something times. He is phenomenal. Uh, I, I had I stopped you earlier before we said something, and I said we want to talk about it later. Right now, the one thing I'm thinking about is if you are anybody who has any kind of want to go for that welterweight title, if you're a Leon Edwards and you're finding it hard to find somebody that has a matchup, if you are a Wonder Boy and you want to get back in the thick of things and really make a run at the welterweight title, I am calling out. 
Kazmat Shabayev. I want to see what he is all about, and I want to take him to some deep rounds. We've never seen this guy go past two rounds, ever, in his entire career. And it's going to take somebody to the caliber of, you know, a Leon Rocky Edwards, somebody like that to really push him. Uh, it'll be an interesting matchup. But like I said, if I'm one of those guys on the outside looking in, and you know, if I'm not Colby Covington, I'm not, if I'm not Jorge Masvidal, I'm calling out Shamayev because I'm taking all that hype right now. I can understand how a Colby or a Masvidal will not call out Hamza because there's more to lose for them than actually win. But a guy like Wonderboy, a guy like Leon Edward, those type of fighters that actually don't have fights and they need to fight if they want to stay relevant in this division. Especially Leon. Yeah, especially Leon. And listen, um, striking wise, I feel like maybe Wonder Boy can be the, can stay the distance and uh, frustrating, you know, with those uh, sidekick to the to the to the body and stuff like that. But how's he gonna do the, grappling? How 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 great <laughs> how great Hamz, Hamzat is actually, actually is. The guy doesn't even Amazing. have the hype of the crowd behind him. Does, there's no crowd. He's not fighting with the crowd and having people chanting his name or whatever. He's creating this hype. Empty arenas. He's everybody wants him to wants to see him fight. So this uh, is I can almost guarantee you his next fight's a headline. He, he should be should be uh, in a main event. Headline a uh, fight night card five rounds. He's not going to need probably two and a half of them <laughs> he, he should be in the main event of a card maybe like i will give him his own card maybe it's not a uh, pay-per-view maybe it's a fight night but it will be his card it will be about him he will be the main event that's what he needs he needs to be in main, the main event he needs to be fighting five round fights even though i'm i'm sure 100 it will not last five round uh that's what he needs He's special and, He's, he he's truly special. special. You know why I say he's special and he is special. Well, there's another point that I wanted to make is, what, what, I don't remember, but dude, the guy can grapple. The guy can, can knock people Clearly out. Clearly strike. One, One punch knockout. What can you, like, what can we say about him? Like, should he be fighting he, he right now? He said he's going to be a double champ by 2020. He too. should be. Should he be fighting right now against really top contenders, or you still keep on building him and climbing the ladder? At this point, just throw him to the wolves. He has proven himself. I agree with you. He wants to. They want to give him like Damon. One Maya. more fight against somebody like a Maya, then I don't want to see nobody outside of like for the top five guys. He. They, he. Well, that's what I wanted to say. He actually wants to fight in Fight Island. So October, maybe. Maybe we'll never know. We will see. I would love that. I would love to see him fight again in Fight Island. If he get that other win and he's ten and zero, like in 2020, I don't know how many. That would be like what his fifth fight or fourth fight. Yeah, it'll be his fourth fight. That's crazy. The guy was from six and zero to ten and zero in one year. Yeah, in less than four months. No, nobody does that. Nobody. Nobody. One man who's been around forever, though, co-main event, Donald Cowboy Cerrone taking on Nico Price. Round one, Nico Price really put it on Cowboy. Price lands the bigger and more consistent punches. Unfortunately, he poked Cowboy in the eye, which made the ref deduct a point nine nine round. Round two, close round. Nico was really working that lower leg kick, and he lands some solid knees to the body. Cowboy looked much better landing some nice spinning back fists and working his jab well. Price slightly edged out the round, 19 to 18. Round three, Cerrone had the best round for sure. Got Nico down and put in some very, very nice ground and pound when he was on there. He's able to get him down twice in that round. They didn't technically count because Nico jumped right back up. But still, I mean, the fact that he's able to do what he's able to do at his age, crazy. Total strikes were even, but Cerrone had way more significant strikes. 28-28 to the decision. Yeah. Donald Cowboy Cerrone and Nico Price is a majority draw. Well, I have some I have some questions. Uh, the first question is: uh, Should all eye pokes be the deducted points because of an eye poke? Should all fighters do the have that? Three. I'm asking you. Three. If you if you if you hit the guy three times, yeah, you're gonna get one point after that. Okay. Time. Okay. So three. Once it's an accident. Twice, okay, maybe three. In Pitch one round, your, yeah, that's too your much. Hands away. I, I agree. I agree. <laughs> Close you. your fist. 
I agree with you 100%. Now, the other thing that I wanted to talk about is because they know I've been talking about I need to have a conversation with Cowboy. Some people said uh, not really because he did perform well. There's something that I'm not liking in this uh, older version uh, of Cow Cowboy is how slow he's starting his fights. Yes, uh, I he's, was just going to talk he, about that. He's a very he, slow he's a, he's a slow starter. He's always been a slow starter, okay? Not like this. But th this, at this pace, damage. It's, it's too much because if you fight against those one round fighters that actually would go Connor. all guns all out in the first round he would get killed and you know there's not just connor there's some crazy motherfuckers in this division there's a there's a lot of crazy fighters in this division imagine him fighting against a hamzat let's say let's say imagine him fighting against a hamzat who actually his whole career been a one round fight it doesn't have, he, he cannot last, he cannot take him to the second or third round. Did he perform well in the third round? Yes, he did. But did he look like shit in the first round? And I don't mean no disrespect. Yes, he did. Because he's having a lot of problems starting Let up. Let me ask you this, sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. Let me ask you this, who do you think looked better, Tyron Woodley or Donald Cowboy Cerrone? Oh, uh, there's nothing that can look worse than Tyron Woodley. Okay. No. Now, so if you're Dana White, who would you be rushing to have that conversation with first? Woodley. Definitely, exactly. definitely Woodley. That's the one thing that really, it was like a, a glaring factor in my eyes when I kept rewatching these fights was, you know, Cowboy looked much better than Woodley did. And everyone's talking about, you yeah. know, Cowboy needed to hang it up. In my opinion, I, I think it's time for Woodley to hang it up. And we'll get into that in a little bit. If I'm call, like, if I'm Dana White, there's, a, there's still fights for Cowboy because he still wants to fight. I would give him like a guy like Diego Sanchez. I would give him yes. some... RDA. I want to see him against like uh, Robbie Lawler. I give him the second fight against Robbie Lawler. There's those kind of uh, on their way out fighters that yes. I would give Cowboy, but Woodley in this division, you will like need to see go with so like Shogun. You know, fighter. he's fighting like you know Rogerio Nogueira twice. Exactly. You exactly. know what I mean? Guys like, like that. I feel like we need to have a situation with Cowboy where he's just fighting a bunch of legends. And the beautiful thing about Cowboy is that he can fight at a welterweight and at a lightweight. So, you know, Maybe Nick it's, again? It's or Nate, really, sorry? It's really easy to to give him fights because he fights in two divisions. Well, yes. why Tyron Woodley only fight in, the, in this killer of a welterweight division? I don't see what can you bring to him. And uh, uh, we're going to talk about fight? Woodley. What do you mean? You said Tyron Woodley fights in a division? Yeah, I just, I thought you know he just what I mean. stood there in the division. Yeah, it's uh, I don't know I don't know what even to call it. But let's let's yeah. just go ahead and get right yeah, into yeah, it. Yeah, let's okay? talk about it. Yeah, Colby Covington it. versus Tyron Woodley, round one. Colby dictates the pace, really the entire round, pushing Woodley up against the fist. Covington outstrikes and outlands Colby, or sorry, Woodley, thirty-six to fourteen. Covington, ten nine easy. Woodley didn't do much again in the second round. Colby lands some clean strikes, mixing it up with multiple body kicks and mixing some up to the head. Covington, 20 to 18. Clearly, he was running away from it. Round three. It feels like we've been watching Woodley try to get started going for like three fights now at this point. Still, we haven't seen absolutely nothing. Colby landed some good and effective combos on all three levels of Woodley. His kickboxing is looking pretty all right, you know, compared to, you know, what people say and criticize him about. Kickboxing did not look horrible. Covington, 30-27. Covington in round four took Woodley down early and landed some effective strikes on the ground, mixing them up well to the head and body. He landed a total of 104 strikes in just this round. That's more fight, more punches strikes landed sorry then woodley landed the entire fight yeah. one round outstruck woodley the entire fight colby covington wins that round 10 8 covington 40 35 round five covington takes woodley down again well on the ground tyrone screams and praying grabbing his side calling for the fight to be called off it was confirmed later that tyrone woodley had broken a rib Colby Covington defeats Tyron Woodley by TKO one minute and 19 seconds into the fifth round. Let's get started. I just want to talk about the performance of Colby Covington for a second before we get on to everything after the fight. Uh, the performance was solid. Uh, I thought we seen a very good Colby Covington, a very relaxed Colby Covington. I don't see enough what's going to put him over the edge against Kamaru Usman. I just don't see it. 
I agree with you. There, there's a lack of power in his striking. Yes. I feel like he he does have like this because he gives you a barrage of of striking. A lot of he, huge volume. Volume. It's about volume, but Usman is also about volume. But the difference is, Usman, there's more power in his striking and even in in, in, the, in the way he takes you down. He slams. You guys do everything really similar. And Usman just does it that much better. Though. I, I, I feel like there's more power. Now, if there's a rematch, you don't know how it goes because it, maybe Colby will be able to take down Usman. And, you know, there's a lot of shit that can happen in that he fight. He broke but that's not... his face. But let's talk about just this fight, okay? I don't want to talk about the other fight because I'm not sh- I'm not feeling like that's the other fight that will be happening like pretty soon, or no, it will happen in 2021. Be next. Yeah, exactly. So, um, Colby, which is a great fight, Colby versus Masvidal. That will be a great fight. But Colby did what Colby had to do. Now, yes, nothing surprising about his performance. He Very did effective they, striking. He did to him what he did to. Uh, to to Robbie, Robbie to what he did to RDA. So yeah, yeah we we know what Colby does and Colby did what he had to do. Okay, now let's talk about Tyron Woodley. First of all, his rib. I feel like his rib broke. That was his body telling him that there's something wrong. You know, the body telling him like he's not resp- the body. Uh, maybe in his head he's trying to do stuff, but his body is not engaging in the way that he sh- should be engaging. So to have this kind of injury. It's a it's a weird injury, but it makes Sucks. a lot of sense. It make but yeah. it makes some sense, you know, when you watch the fight. Now, in a fight like that, where everything is personal, with all the movements of black matters and everything is going on, if this fight cannot get you fired up and let your hand go, I don't see what can what can what other fights can actually bring that fu- that fire into. You. And you know what killed me? What actually killed me? Because it killed me. When he was I trying to touch, to when he to go off. when he was trying to touch glove with Colby, yes, that killed me. Why are you trying to like Colby? If, like, now we're gonna be now we're gonna be boys. Love we're about him to punch or each hate other. Him. Love him or hate him, Colby, and one hundred percent. Like maybe uh, all the people hate him, but one, love him or hate him, there is no double or triple talk. It's one way. I'm a jerk. I will say a jerk. I will be a jerk. From the beginning yes. of the promotion until the end of until the post fight press conference. During the fight, he's a jerk, he will not touch your glove or whatever. Woodley said insult, you know, he said that it's personal and you know, Colby people are saying that maybe there's some racist stuff that he's doing or saying. And um, for me it's just promotion, but I can see what people are getting angry. For sure he's pushing both buttons. So okay, there's it's like like it's up to the people to see if it's it's uh it's too much or not. It's not yeah. up to me. But uh, yeah, Tyron Woodley could not get started in a fight like that. I don't see what can actually bring that fire into him. I don't see that. What do you think? I I ju- I don't know. I don't know. Obviously, at this point, he's got nothing else to prove. He's been former welterweight champion. He defended the welterweight title multiple times. Yeah. I just don't see at the, for the last three fights, you have just stood there and collected half of a paycheck. You're getting good money being an analyst. You're doing other things outside of fighting right now. That's obviously doing very well for you lucratively money wise. What, what more do you have to prove? I don't understand. You're just tarnishing your legacy at this point. And I mean, I get it. You can make the argument, you know, he's only lost to top guys. Yeah. He's lost to the the number one contender, the number two contender, and the champion. Yeah. So, I mean, it's not like he's losing his slouches here. You know, maybe you give him somebody like a Nico Price and you see if he still wants it. Maybe you give him somebody like Cowboy Cerrone and see if he's still got that dog in him. But yeah. if he doesn't show me something in the next fight, I, I, I'm not too sure if there's room for Tyron Woodley in the UFC anymore. He's 38. You know what I mean? He's 38. Mm-hmm. Does he actually wants to go that road fighting against guys like Nico Price or whatever? For a guy like like Cowboy, it makes sense. Cowboy never won actually the belt, even though he fought for the belt. So fighting against this middle type of ranked fighters, that's his whole career. So it still makes sense, and he's still winning. But for Tyron Woodley, that would be a huge blow financially. Right. That would be a huge blow. Everything, you know. So I'm not what sure about if that's... Bellator? There's options there, but 
well, there's some killers there too. And he's if the fighters don't go and they, like if he doesn't have let his hands go, I don't see why he will not let his hands go in the UFC and let them go in Bellator. You know what I mean? One hundred percent. Let's pretty much wrap this up uh, with that portion. I, yeah. I, I gotta get into the fact that I, I feel like the UFC needs to do something about Colby Covington. He is legitimately being blatantly racist. And I get that it's a character, and I understand freedom of speech, and I don't want to step on anyone's toes when it comes to the freedom of speech part, but there's a line that is being jumped way the fuck over at this point. And Colby Covington has been at that line for a while, and is now, you know, I, I get that you're Donald Trump's boy. That's cool, man. I, I'm, I'm all for you doing whatever you want to do politically, vote for whoever you want to. I'm not going to judge you based on that. It's not my opinion. It's not my beliefs, but I'm not going to force mine or expect you to, you know, take, understand where I'm coming from. So don't bring it into the fight world. I don't want to hear about it. I don't care about who you're voting for. I care about who you're punching in the face. And it just has no room in our sport. I, I get that Donald Trump is boys with, Dana White and I, I get the fact that he's been there and supported MMA for a while um, there is a, a problem right now in this country with social injustice and I don't think it's an issue that Colby Covington should be trying to tackle uh, I agree with you I see what you mean and uh, maybe from a outsider perspective because I'm not from the United States maybe my opinion doesn't it's not like the same because you actually there so uh you you get in touch more than maybe me or europeans or maybe africans you know what i mean but for me that's what i kind of lo love about the usc and dana white because that's what he said if you want to talk shit you 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 will like yeah, you will be able to talk shit in press yes. you can say whatever you want so i don't want to see that goes because i feel like once you start putting like filters in my people's mouth and you don't let them go then we'll, we'll go on a road that maybe we will not enjoy you know now but i agree with you scripted it's yeah it's too much maybe colby is going too much is he yeah he's been doing it ever he's been calling brazilians animals when he was there you know in brazil and he's been doing this type of shit ever ever since that damien maya fight okay so yes no surprise in there, but uh, people need to see how great of a fighter Colby Covington is, even though maybe he's such a dick as a human being. But me, personally, I'm a huge fan of the fighter. I see the fighter. I listen, I don't live with him. I don't give a fuck what he <laughs> eats or what he does. You know, and I'm just talking about fighting-wise. The dude brings something very interesting to the table. Like when you see the volume of, you know, the way he's fighting, it's, it's amazing. So don't get fooled by the the dickhead that he is. What does he say? He's... Real deal American steel and sex appeal or some shit like that. Yeah, he's, he's a, a character. The he's dude's a character. a character. He's funny. There's just there's a line that he's stepping over and it's unnecessary. I wanted to, to talk about just one thing before we end up this thing. I loved how Kamaru Usman handled Colby Covington in the microphone. I, I loved face. it. I loved it. So calm. Can you hear me? It was his I best. broke your face. It Just was constantly his, over and over again. It was great. It was his best microphone performance, I feel like, ever since he, he's been a, uh, in the UFC. Because yes. people said that Usman is kind of cringy. Usman been against some top, you know, uh, trash talk speaker, you know, like Ben Askren, Colby. All these people been talking shit about him, even Masvidal, you know. Those are not easy to, but the way he handled Colby Covington, that was beautiful. Beautiful. Now, listen, we're pushing on 15 minutes. So I'm trying to wrap it up here real quick. Yeah. Give me three names that you're looking forward to seeing again. Three great performances from Saturday night. My boy, Colby. I want to see what's next for him. Uh, I feel like he will be pushing for a fight against uh, Kamal Usman. Uh, even the tab came out, he is the number one contender. Even Dana White been talking about the possibility of having him against uh, Kamaru. So, because he, you know, Dana stopped pushing for that fight. He's been saying that the first fight was amazing, you know. Something that he didn't even say after the first round, the first fight. 
So he's pushing for that second fight. And don't be surprised if the next fight for uh, Kamaru Usman will be Kobe Covington. I'm not saying that he's the one who deserves it the more, but I feel like... Well, Burns, I believe, is already signed, isn't it? Uh, after Burns. I'm talking about after Burns. Uh, yeah, I can see that for sure. So the second one uh, would be Mackenzie Dern. I want to see her climb the ladder, minutes. and I want to see her fight for the belt. I want to see her climb a ladder. I want to be below it as she's climbing. <laughs> oh, come on. She's a mother. <laughs> and uh, I, the, th- the, third fight, the third fighter it has to be Hamzat, you know, for both of Hamzat, us. It has yeah, to be she look, he, has, he looked amazing. He's, he's, he, he is so lethal. It's, it's amazing. I'm going to give you three guys. Uh, oh, sorry, three fighters. Because yeah. one is a girl. Andre Ewell, 129 strikes landed. Uh, beautiful performance by him. I can't wait to continue to see what he does in the Bantamweight division. We've had him on multiple times. Try to get him on again here. Talk about this victory. Randy Costa won a performance of the night. Huge, huge victory over Journey Newsome. The huge head kick, man. Uh, phenomenal. And then Jessica Rose Clark, man, she got snubbed for a performance bonus. She had a great performance. Would have had a great highlight hill knockout with a knee, but, you know, it was taken from her from the referee. But nonetheless, she still had a beautiful performance. Those are my three takeaways from this weekend. Uh, huge honorable mentions, though. We can talk about Johnny Walker, Tyson Nam, Derek Minner. I mean, there's a, b- a bunch of people. Myra Bueno Barella, Damon Jackson. Just a, beautiful performances left and right. I can't wait. But guess what, guys? We're going back to Fight Island. UFC 253, Israel Adesanya versus Paulo Costa. Stay tuned. Wally Wall and I are going to break down that next. I can't wait, knuckleheads. Stay classy. Peace.